Okay, now you don't have to go extreme, so don't be scared. Now you can take your house from cluttered and overwhelming to simplified and calming, just with a little bit, just a little bit of minimalism. Hey friends, I'm Robin. I help overwhelm people declutter all of the excess from their lives so that they can start living them. All right, grab your tea and let's go. So when people see minimalism, they might think scary and stark, but that's not really the case. It's actually more of a lifestyle and you don't have to go to extremes, but we can get to that in a minute. Now I'm also going to get into the how to minimize, but first let's explain why minimalism might be a good idea, why I love it so, so much and why you might love it too. Now let's go back to the very beginning. Now a lot of us grew up with some scarcity. So we started collecting things. Over time, there became an abundance of things and then maybe an overabundance of things. Um, even if you didn't grow up with scarcity, you still might have developed clutter, like you probably developed clutter. And if you don't declutter on a regular basis and start watching what you buy, then your clutter can grow and grow. And as your clutter grows, it can be hard to find spots to put things and you can start to have piles of things everywhere. You can have stacks on your dressers, kitchen counters, floors, everywhere. And what about storage? Now boxes filled with things uh, could be all over your house. Maybe if you've ever moved and you haven't unpacked for years, all of a sudden you find that you still have boxes that you haven't gone through. Actually, after we moved the last time, our chiropractor was like, well, you know, you need a box, a room for boxes, right? And I was like, oh yeah. And we honestly had a room full of boxes for at least a year. That must be for minimalism, of course, but you get the picture. So your storage can be filled with things that you don't use and you can't even find space to put your Christmas decor if your clutter is getting out of control. For me, I've been there before. And as an emergency nurse, things were real, real hectic. I was in a really busy, stressful emergency environment. I would come home, um, I would just really want to relax. It was 12 hour days and like I said, really stressful. I just want to decompress and spend time with my family. But as soon as I walked through the door, it was just so messy and overwhelming. And I honestly would just be like, well, and I would just start cleaning right away. And I would be like getting really cranky with my family. And I would just want to like head right back to the hospital. And that's not normal. And so what's funny is I remember I read an article and it was describing the effect of clutter on people and a real light bulb went off for me. And I was like, wait a minute, like this is why I don't like this clutter. Like it is, it is literally driving me insane. Like I get it now. So I bought Joshua Becker's book and then we started minimalism. So once we started, we were minimizing, we were decluttering and amazing things began to happen. In just a minute, I'll just discuss how we got started. But first, how does this sound? You come home to a clean, tidy, simplified home. So you can relax, you can do whatever you want. You can walk your dog, you can play with your kids, you can watch a movie, you can write a book, whatever you want. It's easy to clean up after dinner, which is great. Maybe we actually like enjoy cooking dinner because it's like not so messy. And instead of struggling to find spots to put things, everything has a place. There are no backpacks lying around because there's a spot for them. And there's room in that spot. Your kitchen is tidy. There are no piles of things all over your counters, which is like, what kitchens are notorious for, let's be honest. Your dresser, it's nice, it's tidy. There's nothing stacked on top of it. You know, you've got space to work anywhere you need to in your house. Your living room does not have things all over the place, but instead it's nice and simple, kind of like a hotel room. You know, a lot of us, really, we really like hotel rooms. And now why is that? It's because it's simple, it's minimal. The furniture, it's there. There might be a bland painting, really minimal. Now in your house, I don't think your paintings or artwork have to be bland, but the less clutter and stuff, it's less work for your brain. Now our brains get overwhelmed with lots of things to look at and this stresses us out. Our eyes and brains want a calm environment to look at. Your brain does not want to be burning a bunch of calories. It just wants to look around at like pretty plain stuff for the most part. Women in particular feel overwhelmed by clutter even more than men. And now why is that? It's because it feels like the work is never done. You really cannot relax if you feel like you should be doing something. And now what you should be doing is recharging, reading, enjoying some downtime, but instead you're just looking around at that mess. Once that clutter and the mess and the piles are gone, your work goes way, way, way down. And all of a sudden you don't need to actually manage that clutter anymore. You don't even realize how much you're managing clutter. 
And it's also way easier to clean because you don't need to move things all over the place anymore. And you might even find that you get along better with your family because you're not getting frustrated with their clutter and they're not getting frustrated with your clutter. So how do you declutter? Now I use a checklist that I made a few years ago and it has my process on it and the questions that I ask and I will link that below. But the most important question that I think it's my favorite to ask is, does this add value to your life? Now, if you're keeping something and it's not adding value to your life, you need to let it go. So this could be like clothes that you don't wear, things that are stuck in boxes that you're just keeping out of guilt or because they're sentimental, maybe a painting that you don't really look at or enjoy. It's just sort of there and you're like, Meh. or just you might have way too many spatulas. An example that I often like to give is if you had a food processor, a blender, a chopper, cutting board and knives. All of those things are used for processing and cutting food. You don't necessarily need all of them, but you don't necessarily only need one. So a lot of people, they have like those chopper things, but they don't really use them. Meanwhile, they've got a food processor, they've got a blender, you've got knives. I would suggest getting rid of the chopper if you're not using it because those other things can fill in very well. Another example is of course the Instant Pot that so, so many of us have. You might have an instant pot, you might have a slow cooker, but honestly your instant pot can do both. So you might want to declutter the slow cooker. Maybe you have a rice cooker and you're like, I don't need a rice cooker. I can just use my instant pot or I can just use a pot on a stove. Like you decide what works for you. Another example is a lot of us keep clothing that doesn't really fit us or that we don't wear, but we maybe spent a good amount of money on it and we feel like we should keep it. Don't keep it. It's not doing you any good. You're not wearing it. Now people can get hung up on the idea of minimalism. They think that it means that you can't have pretty much anything. Now, some people go real, real minimal like Joshua Becker. He's an example of one. And I mean, they have less stuff than we do. We are minimalists, but we're not extreme minimalists. We don't keep extra things around that we don't use, but we also don't get rid of absolutely everything. We have things around, we have paintings, we have a few ornaments, we have enough furniture for the family and a guest or two. I'm not saying Joshua Becker doesn't have a, those things, but I have appliances in my kitchen. We even just invested in a pasta rolling machine because we love cooking it. My son loves making fresh pasta, but let's face it, he'll be the one keeping that when he moves. You know, the point is not to keep things that you don't use. Declutter the clothes that you don't use. Manage your paperwork immediately so you don't have extra paperwork lying around. Evaluate your artwork, your ornaments, and your storage. Also be mindful about what you buy. It was not an easy decision for me to actually buy the pasta roller and I honestly thought about it for the better part of a year and finally I was like, yes, I will buy it. And I'm glad we did. It's very good pasta that comes from it. Another thing, borrow things when you can instead of buying them. A lot of times people don't realize that they can borrow things from people instead of like, you know, for me, I want to start canning things next summer. Well, maybe I'll just borrow a canner from someone, you know, um, I don't necessarily have to have that. And then I can lend them something as well. I have a set of bolt cutters that I bought specifically to make a trellis. So I have bolt cutters. If you have a canner that I can borrow, that would be great. And now when you downsize and declutter, you make way more room for living. You make more time and you can save money on what you don't buy. You will be happier. You will be less stressed. You will be more relaxed because you are not surrounded by the burdensome clutter all of the time. And now just a nice, simple surrounding that is inviting and calming. And you don't also, like I said, you don't have to go extreme, but you might find that you actually end up removing more and that you're just much happier as a result of that. Now I made a few videos about decluttering and minimizing, so you can check right here and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.